Before I begin my lesson, I want to make an announcement. I've been coming out, you know, every Sunday, looking very nice. And the word has gone out. Johnny's got a new wardrobe. I want to get that straight. So that when I do get one, these are not new clothes. If you will recall, I was on television, Better Living with Johnny Coleman, and my Christmas program, which has been at least 12 years ago. That's how wonderful this dress is. And all the other cute things that I wore, they were seven or eight years, simply because before I couldn't get in them. And now that I can get in them, these are those clothes that, well, I'm an only child, I keep everything. So that's just some of those old ones that I kept. But I'm not gonna keep any of the big ones because I don't want to get big no more, so I'm going to keep the little ones so I'll have something to get in. So I just want y'all to get the right information as you take it wherever you're going to take. We have just completed 40 successful years at Christ Universal Temple. And the question is, after 40, what? What? The answer is, we begin again. It is recorded in John 8, 32. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth, come on, shall set you free. The C-U-T ministry fulfills this great statement and because it fulfills this great statement C-U-T is different it is different because it is a teaching ministry teaching only the principles that Jesus taught principles that will help people understand how to live a better life. The principles taught and practiced here for 40 years have drawn thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands whose lives have changed for the better. Some come back and say thank you. Most of them do not come back and say thank you and that's okay it doesn't make any difference whether they come back to say thank you we are only concerned about getting the foundation and the principles under your belt because i don't ever have to worry about my children because once they have the foundation they can go anywhere do anything because the foundation those principles will rise up and if it's not in line with principles, it'll slap them down wherever they are. I don't have to be concerned about it. And I'm just so very happy. My soul is standing erect this morning for all of you, but especially for two of my children that's sitting right on the front row. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Reggie is here. If you remember, Reggie was up there from the piano to the organ. He was one of our very fine musicians. Reggie is now in New York on Broadway, and he is the producer of Smokey Joe's Cafe and I was there you should have been there if you haven't been there go this afternoon go tonight this is the last time to see Mr. Reggie make a piano jump up and down on the platform and with us this morning get up Reggie where are you yeah I'm going to take credit for it. How did you get that? From these principles taught right here. My child, Ben Vereen, is here. Yeah. 
Now, Ben is supposed to be in New York rehearsing for Christmas carols, but he decided, I'm going to my church this morning, and as soon as church is over, John, I got to get the plane, I got to be back in New York. He's uh, Broadway rehearsing now, Christmas carols. I was there for the opening last year, and if you're in New York, make sure to go see Ben Vereen in Christmas carols. Madison Square Garden. Get up, Ben. Mr. Ben Vereen. And because these principles work on Broadway, work on stages all over the world, I feel that we should not and we must not abandon these principles. These principles healed my body. These principles healed my affairs. These principles healed my pocketbook. And what it's done for me, it'll do for you. It works if you work it. My assignment from God is to explain to his children what this church is about. And then remind the children that they have a choice. Choose ye any day the church that you can be loyal to, committed, and dedicated to. I'm to remind you, you are free to worship wherever. Remember, your consciousness has to be in the awareness of the nature of God so that you will not add, hear me, wake up, so that you will not add any extra negative connotations to whatever I say from this platform. I will not let you intimidate me. If you have been here more than once, you know that I care about you. You know that I love you as my members and friends of CUT. If you've been here more than once, you know that I am not here just to talk about money. I always remind you that because money seems to be the medium of exchange in the years that I've been on earth, and I've been here longer than most of you, and you have to use money. So don't be offended because I want you to have some money in your pocketbook and in your bank account. I know that God is the source of my supply. I will not let anyone interfere with God speaking through me as me. My God is a God of fun. My God is a happy God. My God is the kind of God that puts a smile on your face. My God is the kind of God somebody has said, well, she's even humorous. Of course I am because I believe that life is for living and life is funny to me sometimes. And I wanna be able to say what I have to say to you whenever I wanna say it without you taking it seriously. And I got to come and apologize to you because I said whatever it is I said. Now, this church is different. Got a different kind of minister. Got a peculiar minister. Got a unique minister. Got an individualized minister. Got a minister that it ain't no more like her. If you are here to work in the church, you might be disappointed. If you come here and think that you're going to have the same kind of active activities that you just left, and nothing's wrong with that, I'm not talking about any church, I'm talking about this one, there will not be a whole lot of flitting and flitting around or uh, trying to get you so that 
I miss it. You know, I'm accustomed to doing this and that and the other. My thing is, because it's a teaching ministry and it's a growing thing, you need to get somewhere and sit down and try to learn and understand the principles that's going to help you live a better life. So you won't have all of that flitting around in here. Do, it, it, is that, do you understand that? We come here to learn. That's all that this church is about. So I don't want you to be disappointed and feel lost because there's really nothing to do here but try to build an awareness of the presence of God. And that's a full-time job. It's a full-time job to understand that life is consciousness. And wherever we go, we take our consciousness, come on, with us. It's a full-time job to see everything as God sees it, good and only good. After 40 years, what? In the beginning, God. The commandment is, you must know what and who God is. Now, if you're saying in your mind, well, I've heard that a million times, I don't argue that with you. But somewhere, we have missed the point. Somewhere, we didn't get it in here. So you're going to hear it until it runs out of your eyes, ears, and nose. Until you are able to live it. You see, it's more to a teaching ministry than you sitting there looking beautiful, and you do able to stand up, able to repeat and say these affirmations and even sing them. More to it than that. You got to be it. You got to practice it. You got to be able to stand up when everything else is going down. You got to be able to say, I know that I know that I know and it's my proven time and it's my growing time. So pour it on me, Father. You got to be ready, ladies and gentlemen, and I hope you hear me. Who and what is God? I want to tell you about my God. God is my father. He feeds me. In my story, you know, I talk a little bit about John Haley. That was my father. Big, tall, handsome guy that smoked a great big cigar and wore this great big hat. We in Mississippi, we wore big hats. He had his big hat on, but I didn't have to walk for anything because he was my father. And I knew that he was going to do and give me whatever it was I needed and much of that that I don't need. That's the kind of father God is to me. He feeds me. God is my mother. He soothes me and dries away my tears. God is my source, which means he's the origin of everything that I am. And, and because I really can't describe God and can't nobody else do it either, I just say God is, big period. After 40 years, I know that God is principle, which means definite, exact, and unchanging. That's what I really like about it, he don't change. Same thing, you may change. And don't keep laying it on my God. God does not change. God is definite and God is exact. God is divine mind, which is the storehouse of all. God is creator, the maker of all there is on this earth. God is law, and I like that. God is love, but he's also law, which is the supreme rule of action. God is truth, that which endures, is, and always will be the same. And then we love these three omnis, and sometimes we can say them so beautifully. We've been to JCI, and all I have to do is say, God is omna. You can, you can say it. And I wonder, do we really understand that God is all the what? Presence. Omnipresence means he's all the presence there is. God is omnipotence, which is all the power. God is omniscience, which is all-knowing. 
God I'm talking about. After 40, what about you, man slash woman? What about us? I want to tell you something. This is a teaching ministry, and I hope I teach you something this morning. Man, woman, you come forth from God, and you have the character or nature of your parent. Heaven, when are we ever going to accept it? I have come forth out of God. And because I have come out of God, pressed out of God, I have the same character. I have the same nature. I am one with God, not God and Johnny, just God as Johnny. Makes a whole lot of difference. Talking about man slash woman, you are created, here's mine, with dominion. Anybody know the rest of it? Come on. Over the earth and told to subdue it. Man's earth is the human consciousness. In human consciousness, man has established beliefs in good and not so good. The message to you is man slash woman, you have dominion. How do you exercise it? You have dominion over the birds of the air, over every creeping thing. You have dominion. Stop letting things and people and situations and conditions have power over you. Stop doing that. Do you hear me? Yes. You are a thinking, feeling, knowing expression of God. You are a threefold being having a spirit, which is the core of you. You have a soul. And your soul has a structure, and the structure is you think in that conscious phase of you. That's why you are different from any other creation. You can think, and I describe it, which is, does not have to be the way you describe it, but I like to think about the conscious part of me is this part where I think where the intellect is and sometimes you know and again now this is just a joke I just want to say to God dear God why did you teach me to think of why did you give me that gift I wish I was just a puppet and just go up and down on the string I'd make sure that my thinking would be in order because you see your thoughts become your thoughts become the things of your life. And when you think it, then you begin to feel it. And that feeling phase of you is located in the what phase? Subconscious phase of you. And we describe that subconscious phase as, as a tape recorder. I see a lot of you need to be in here. You don't know no answers. Subconscious is the tape recorder, and when the subconscious records it on the tape, then what does it do? It plays it back to you, good, bad, or indifferent. That other phase of you is the knowing phase of you that we call the superconscious phase of your being. And that's the good part. That's the part that we all going to keep working until we stay tuned in with that part. And then you have a body. And that body expresses what you think and what you feel. Now, I don't want to insult you any more than I already have. 
<laughs> but I have to tell you, you don't have to ask anybody how you doing or what you're thinking. You don't even have to tell me how you feel. Your body shows that. And if you don't like your body, hear this. You have neither spirit, soul, or body of your own. You use God's spirit, God's soul, and God's body. You are the inlet and the outlet of life, substance, and intelligence. I love this one. You are a spiritual being with a spiritual body created by God. Woo! I am a spiritual being with a spiritual body created by God. Want to say it? I am a spiritual being created No, no, that ain't right. I am a spiritual being with a spiritual body created by God need to live with that one you see what it does it is it takes away all that humanness as long as we continue to say I am a spiritual being with a physical body then that means you're gonna take on all the physical things that happen out here in the world you don't want that you want to be a spiritual being with the spiritual body that God created and his spirit is perfect, his spirit is whole, his spirit cannot be broke, it can't be poor, it can't lack or be limited to anything. I am a spiritual being because that's what he created you to be. Now where all this other junk and mess came from, you did that yourself. And so you don't like that anymore, so get rid of it. And the minute that you release it and say I don't want it anymore, I'm going to tell you in a few minutes exactly how to do that. Man, woman, because of who and what you are, you can move mountains. You can move mountains. I just let that soak in a minute. If, now you know something had come behind it. If you focus your attention on God the good. Do you know the connecting link between you and God? Do you know the connecting link between you and God? Yeah, how many know? Let, let me see your hand. Oh, one or two. <laughs> Do you know the connecting link between you and God? Answer. Huh? I don't know what you're saying, but the answer is your thoughts connect you with God. Important. Your thoughts connect you with God and you do the connecting through prayer by praying and meditation. Change your thoughts in the conscious mind because the conscious mind gives the thought good, bad, or indifferent to the subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind carries the thought onto your screen of life. As we say it here and in New Thought, change your thoughts and you change your life. Change your thoughts and you change your life. And maybe you want to know, how do I do that? And I'm happy to share it with you this morning. This is how you do it. Deny it. Call it a lie. Regardless to how seeming evil tries to appear, the statement to use, there is no evil. There is no evil. When there seems to be an absence of life, substance, or intelligence, deny the thought and say, there is no absence of life, substance, or intelligence anywhere. There is no absence of life, substance, or intelligence anywhere. Repeat after me. There is no absence of life, substance, 
or intelligence anyway. Now, this is one we all need. When sickness, poverty, or old age try to master you, change the thought, deny it, say, pain, sickness, poverty, old age, and death cannot master me, for they are not real. Have you ever heard it before? Yes. Have you ever used it? Yes. Well, you need to keep using it, because you keep on coming up with something hurting here, and the arthritis, and the this, and the that, and the this, and the that. Pain, sickness, old age. Old age, you're just getting as old as you can possibly get because you're listening to people tell you happy birthday, this is your so-and-so and so-and-so, yeah. And everything that goes with old age will happen to you. You won't be able to step up in your car after a while because your legs won't get up high enough to get you in the car. And don't come word me with it at all. I don't discuss that. <laughs> Change your thought about the universe because there's nothing in all the universe for me to fear. For greater is he, come on, that is within me, come on, than he that is in the world. Every thought produces at its kind. And the law of the universe is like begets like. The spiritual law is we are what we think. We are what we think. And I ask you at this moment to take your bulletin in your hand and I want you to join me as we begin again, as we answer the question, after 40, what? I want you to stand up because I want you to wake up. And believe me, if you are not rededicating or reconsecrating yourself, there's always something in your life to be reconsecrated and rededicated. At this moment, I want to ask the members and friends of this church to rededicate yourselves as students of truth. It begins on the inside page where it says, a litany of reconsecration. Do you have it? We have come together to reconsecrate and rededicate ourselves as students of truth and the new thought teachings and to their effective and powerful application in our lives and affairs. There is one body and one spirit, one God and Father of all. Turn the page and read to please respond. There is but one presence and one power in truth and in life. The presence and power is God the good. Thou hast holden my right hand Thou wilt guide me with thy counsel together. I covenant myself to a constant, unchanging, and ever-increasing faith in God. And I trust him to guide me and We are children of God. And if children, then heirs. Heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ together. I reconsecrate myself to the positive realization of my permanent identity, a child of the living God. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Knowing my true God-likeness, I am now free, strong, inspired, and inspiring. He will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. My way through life is no longer frustrated with uncertainty, indecision, and failure. Directed and strengthened by God, I walk in the path of light, happiness, and success. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight this day and forevermore. Please be seated as I share with you this very last truth. God, God, God is available to me. God, God, God is available to you. Take your own finger and say, 
God is available to me. Say it again. God is available to me. I'm telling you what I know. If you don't believe me after 40 years, <laughs> try it.